Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Modding Mondays, the series where I look at No Mercy mods, Smackdown mods, and Day of Reckoning mods. Today we are looking at a No Mercy mod called NXT Takeover by the one Tyler Black. So this mod is free, the link is in the description and the pinned comment, it's not too difficult to set up, the roster tool might be a bit tricky for you but it's not too bad, if you need a help, if you need a hand, sorry, if you need help or you need a hand, message me on Twitter and Discord and I will help you set this up. So without further ado, let's get into this mod. So this mod focuses on NXT of course, but it also has some NXT UK talent and 205 live talent. So let's look at some of the arenas here. We have New Orleans, Philadelphia, Chicago, 205 Live, NXT UK, Phoenix, Full Sail University NXT, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, War Games, Brooklyn, and that's it. So you have a fair selection of takeovers and different stages from the time presentation is all very nice and as you can hear the roster too going there is custom music in here so let's take a look at that roster we've got our main event talent McIntyre, Almas, Black, Gargano, Ciampa, Balor all with multiple attires representing each takeover so if you're an NXT nut if you know every big NXT match and what gear they wore this is the mod for you the attention to detail is Perfect. Like, look just to Gargano here, the amount of different attires you can go through. Even backstage ones, if you like ones like that. We have the Undisputed Era. We have Sanity. We have the mid-card talent from the time. Riddle, Keith Lee, Dijakovic, Kushida, EC3, Damian Priest. Your tag teams, AOP, Hanson and Rhodes, Street Profits, The Forgotten Sons, Heavy Machinery, uh, Lorcan and Birch, Fandango and Tyler Breeze. Then we've got more 205 NXT talent like Humberto Carrillo, Leo Rush, Cameron Grimes, Angel Garza, Swerve Scott. We've got the NXT women, your Ripley's, your Io Shirai's, your Belair's, your Mia Yim's, your Tony Storm's, your uh, Jessamyn Dukes and Marina Shafir's, your Dakota Kai's, your Tegan Knox's. So all your NXT needs are taken care of. This mod also had some DLC from when people were invading. NXT, so when Asuka, the Kabuki Warriors were down there, when Becky Lynch was down there, we've got the NXT UK crew, we've got Pete Dunne and Mustache Mountain, we've got Imperium, we've got the Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang, we've also got the tag teams here as well as Jordan Devlin, Travis Banks, we don't really want to talk too much about them, and of course here's more of the DLC, the club, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, The Revival, Buddy Murphy and Alex Shelley if you want to do the time splitters and of course the incomparable Jushin Liger is DLC. So all very very good here. So I'm going to get into this as soon as possible. I'm going to pick Ricochet and I'm going to show you the music tool and I'm going to take on Ciampa, arguably the greatest heel in NXT history. So let me just uh, stay quiet here and you'll be able to hear the music tool for a few seconds. So as you can hear, very, very cool. The presentation here is top notch. I even like the, the HUD, the display, everything is very, very much NXT. And you'll see a bunch of hack moves here. So everyone wrestles like you want them to wrestle. It's just a fantastic mod. So I want to talk about NXT. NXT has gone through a major facelift since the last time, well, since this game came out. Oh, just jumped over the sick, sick spot, but I can do it too. Look at this. Speaking of hack moves. Ricochet's handstand hits is very, very cool. But NXT has gone through a major facelift since the last time we saw it. Um, NXT 2.0 has launched. And we've got Braun Breaker. We've got a bunch of women's wrestlers who have a lot of potential. And a lot of our favorites are gone or, in, or are in AEW. So it's definitely a strange time for NXT fans. And um, if you look at wrestling Twitter, which is toxic as fuck, 
you will see a very split audience, people who love the super indie days, but also people who love the more character driven gimmicks that they have nowadays. So let me know if you were a fan of the super indie days or you're drifting towards more NXT 2.0. I wasn't checking it out to be honest, despite it being WrestleMania season and when this video is recorded just after WrestleMania actually, I think they just did WrestleMania Backlash for on the way to Money in the Bank. Uh, I didn't watch, what was it called, it must have been uh, Stand and Deliver, I think it's the Wrestlemania season one. I just had no interest, just had no interest in whatsoever, but I said, okay, I'm going to give it a try. They've got this women's tournament going, and fair play to them, they've got a lot of talent in that women's division. Cora Jade, or Cora Jade, they've got Roxanne, they've got Nikita Lyons, they've got Lash Legend, they've got Tiffany Stratton, who looks very promising, and they've also got Santino Morella's daughter, who seems to have really gotten the business in terms of facials and everything she's very like her father she's been very very good and they've got the crew brothers they've got joe casey which is a bit hit and miss for me if i'm honest but i think there's a lot of cool acts there and a lot of talent there that if developed and nurtured which is what they're going for now signing these young people super kick to the floor there from ricochet they could have a really interesting product in their on their hands in two or three years time I'm gonna hit this spaceman here. Look at this. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> Swing and a miss from the one and only Ricochet. Swing and a big miss. What are you talking to me right there? I can bring you out. Such a fool. Such a fool, Champa. But yeah, I think in a few years' time, I guess, yeah, in a few years' time, we'll really tell how talented those people are, what we can really expect from said talent but it, it's exciting i think it's exciting you know we're going to discover and we're going to grow with these people that was what was so endearing for a lot of people about the original nxt you saw sasha banks grow you saw charlotte flair grow you saw bailey grow you know bailey's story was amazing to watch everyone was sucked in by bailey's story there's not one person who hated bailey everyone wanted bailey to succeed you know? which made her victory over sasha so much more special so now we've got all these acts Damn, I really messed that up. I thought I had enough time. Chamba's gonna go with the work on my leg. But now we have all these acts that we're discovering and we're getting to know and we're gonna watch them grow. And I, I think it's gonna be fascinating. I think it's gonna be really interesting. I hope they can pull it off. I really hope so. Because a lot of the talent is young and I don't want to see them and ruined early. What's this? Oh, Cold Skull. Ricochet's been looking at the, a bit of the New Japan stuff. He was uh, he was team Taguchi, but he, he fought Sonata a few times. Super kick! Oh no! Gotta be careful. Miss that super kick. Gotta be very careful. Oh, that is just the worst kick animation ever. That is so slow and so easy to counter. Okay, do not throw kicks as Ricochet. Bad idea. We'll go back to our suplexes. We'll go back to more simple offense. Straight up rest. Here we go. Nice. Nice ground and pound. Wow, oh, like the days of, like the 80s days. Oh, we're brawling. There's Memphis going on here. Alright. Oh no, I threw the kick again. I can't be careful guys. I'm throwing that damn kick. But yeah, I think they have a lot of promise with NXT 2.0. Time will tell whether it's a success or not, but I'm optimistic. And it's certainly a change from these days. Speaking of these days then, I want to know some of your favorite NXT matches. I think it's very hard to choose, to be honest. And so much of those takeovers range from very good to excellent you know i can't really think of a bad takeover where i was disappointed or where i thought this is a terrible card you know the cards were so small they had so much going on oh poison rana oh my god he just spiked me with poison rana he's going back to my leg oh that was so cool oh man i forgot what i was saying there man what a poison rana yeah um a lot of the takeovers were always so good oh please don't do it again oh german were so good and it, it was really hard to narrow down some of my favorite matches because i could pick one or two from so many different cards but uh what i had here was a uh, sammy Zayn versus neville our evolution uh, career versus title i thought that was an excellent match neville being um, slowly turning into one of the best heels on the roster and the chase for sammy Zayn. and there's not one person who did not want sammy Zayn to win that championship and uh, when it happened it was fantastic and of course he didn't hold on to it for very long but that didn't really matter and um, to me or a lot of people because kevin owens was the one to take it off him but yeah watching sammy come so close in the fatal four-way with tyson kinn and tyler breeze you know neville pulling him out i just thought it was masterful storytelling 
really awesome stuff from the WWE and NXT and I mean I was just a huge Sami Zayn fan. Oh 450 to the back! Absolutely disgusting move there from Ricochet. I wonder if I have the recoil. Some of my other favourite matches, Bailey and Sasha Banks. I mean, how can you vote against it? One of the best matches of all time. Uh, the Brooklyn match, and then they just do the Iron Maiden match a couple of months later, which is just as sick and just as fantastic. It's hard to choose between the two. I couldn't really choose between the two. Oh man, he is just hitting me with every fucking suplex here. Is he fucking Taz or something? Dragon suplexes? German suplexes? But yeah, Bailey and Sasha Banks, tremendous rivalry in NXT. Some of my favorite matches in NXT right there. And DIY versus Revival. Two out of three falls, NXT Toronto. I fell in love with um, Gargano and Ciampa. I wanted them so badly to win. And that two out of three falls match is magical when they both lock in their finish on uh, Dash, er, da yeah, Dash and Dawson. I was going to call them their NXT names, but or call them their AEW names, but yeah, Dash and Dawson, when they do the Gargano escape and the Fujiwara Hammer, it's just, it's just phenomenal stuff, and they grab each other's hands and tap, and it's great. Um, in terms of spot fest matches that I really liked, uh, the six-man ladder match, and um, for the North American Championship, I thought that was unreal, just a great spot fest between everyone, Adam Cole walking away the winner there, and um, Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler, I thought they had an excellent feud with one another, and especially their two out of three falls match, really good stuff too. And I think the the original War Games match is great, but also the one where Kevin Owens comes out is another fantastic match. And um, just really good stuff. It's really hard to choose, but I, I want to hear some of your favorites as well. You might have this man right here, the uh, Ricochet. He could be in a few of your favorites. I know he had great matches with Adam Cole. Of course, the Springboard Moonsault into the. The springboard moonsault into the super kick is one everyone remembers, but also his match with Gargano was very good. And um, his match with Velveteen Dream, obviously a bit tainted now, but look at this move hack. 6.30. Boom! Oh my god! Absolutely amazing stuff for Ricochet. Oh my goodness. Did you see that? The 6.30? Oh, I love move hacks and no mercy. And now they're getting even better. There's a modding tool created by a uh, retro Randy Price, I believe, that's made them even smoother for like the great people who do it, like Barskio and Tyler has obviously experimented with it as well. So moves like that are gonna look even crisper and more clean. And I just think that is the coolest fucking shit. So we're gonna join back here in a second now and I'm gonna show you tag team wrestling. All right, and we're back and I'm gonna try and show some of those awesome move hacks that I talked about for the tag team matches. So we're gonna go with NXT Chicago. And we're gonna go with Hansen and Roll versus the Undisputed Era because I think I think I can pull it off. Uh, I'm not 100% confident, but I think there's a cool move hack between these two. And if I can pull it off and show it, I'll be happy. But either way, um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, they both have their set of move hacks for their stuff. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Roll and Hansen, the War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era. See how we get on it. I'm gonna be quiet during the entrance of the game. Epic, <laughs> love it. Especially the little guitar thing of him doing, Kyle O'Reilly doing the Hogan Tom. Epic stuff. So well, who is your favorite NXT tag team? And you know, I talked about my favorite match, and uh, which was DIY and Revival, two out of three falls at Toronto. I don't think that can be optimized. And there are a lot of good NXT tag teams though. I was big fan, I was a big fan of the Fall Zone. I, I liked that game. I thought it was ridiculous, but I liked it. Uh, of course, American Alpha, Chad Gable, and Jason Jordan were so good as well. And the revival, and uh, they speak for themselves, they're still tearing it up. They're probably, they're arguably the best tag team in the world right now. Um, I'd put them over Luchasaurus any day. Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Oh my god, I put them for 
Alright, let's see if we can get some of these guys to join. We got Kawada kicks from Bobby Fish. Big up my man Bobby Fish. Getting kicked now by <laughs> Rope. Bang! Alright, let's see. I have anything here. Now, I don't know if this move hack works. I'm not sure. Oh, he does! He does! He lifts him up for it! Oh, it's in the proper position! Okay, so we can do the leg drop. Oh! Drop kick to the back of the head. Okay, I'm gonna try and set it up then. I'm gonna try and set up that big thing. Not now, obviously, because he's, he's not a team. Oh my god, spin kick to death. Get out of my ring. Has to be the finish, right? Has to set it up as a finish. Oh no, messed up my boy. Excuse me! Alright, here we go. Here's something. Here's a big move. Oh, I countered it! Unbelievable. Come here, Riley. Riley. Big oh, spinning back fist. These guys haven't really done well. Um, Hanson and Roll when it comes to the main roster. Um, obviously they don't really care about tag team wrestling up there, but it is sad to see, you know, for every success story like a, a Kevin Owens or a Paige or a Sami Zayn, you had an Emma, a Vaude Villains like that, and there was, there was such a fear. You know, anytime you saw someone in NXT doing well, like Bailey, for example, like, I fell head over heels for Bailey. You know, I fell for that gimmick. And I was like, how is that going to translate in the main roster? What is Vince going to do with that? And it was rough, you know, especially that feud with Alexa Bliss. That was rough to watch. You know, I was such a fan of Bailey. She was just like an absolute muck. So there was a very realistic fear anytime. So I think there is a great what if there. You know, how would it be undisputed elite? Or, sorry, the Undisputed Era, I'm calling them their AEW name, the Undisputed League done on the main roster. You know, there was talk of making Adam Cole a manager, things like that. It's just so hard to believe, you know, this dominant faction is such, such a cool factor to them as well, you know. They were cool heels, everyone wanted to cheer them or be them. And just never made it, and now there's three of them are in AEW. It's just so hard to believe at the end of the day. All right, let's see, we're going for the move hack. We're going for it. Yeah, we're going for it. Oh no! Oh, right. I was gonna say like that's <laughs> that's not the move. Kyle O'Reilly has decided to not. Sam. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, what a sequence there! Hey, New Japan, call us back. We're fantastic. We are fantastic at what we do. I haven't shown any tag team moves though. I'm I'm burying myself. Here. I'm botching big time. Okay, what's he doing? Oh my god, shoulder breaker. German soup spiking him on his head. Alright. He might be able to get away with it here. No, actually, I'm going to throw him out and I'm going to go after Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish is taking my thing. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh, decapitation. Oh yeah, well, fuck it. We'll call it there. That's fucking unreal. One, two. Oh yes. Look at that for a fucking finish. Top quality stuff here. So unfortunately, that move hack broke the game. So I had to reset there for a second. I guess I should have saw that one coming, but that's all right. We're going to move on to NXT UK. We're going to do a little triple threat action here to see who is top dog here in NXT Blackpool TakeOver. So NXT UK, as you know, another brand of NXT. And we're going to get into a bit of a discussion about high hopes for it or how well it did. So we're going to get a bit of Walter bit of Pete Dunn and a bit of Tyler Breeze or <laughs> Tyler Breeze Tyler Bate sorry sorry I shouldn't have made that mess there's Tyler Bate okay Pete Dunn Walter Tyler Bate let's get it on I'll be quiet during the theme again just so you get to hear how good they are
Tyler Bay has such a great song. <laughs> Look at the size of that water, by the way. He's slimmed down significantly since then, man. That is, that is massive. So yeah, anyway, to talk about NXT UK, I, I sure, again, I want to hear what you guys uh, thought of it and think of it currently. Um, the first time I saw NXT UK was the championship match between Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Um, at whatever NXT takeover that was. I, I'm not really a guy who checks out all the indies. I don't really have time to do that, unfortunately, so I wasn't really up to date with Progress or OTT or whatever was going on in Germany and WXW. I just, I don't have time to consume all that wrestling. So I was really introduced to these guys in that tournament and then they launched with that. And Pete Dunne's Bitter End. Oh, here's one of the move hacks. Kyle O'Reilly one, boom. Uh, Pete Dunne's Bitter End was like, for me, was like um, Ember Moon's Finish the Eclipse. It was like a, a really well-kept secret because I had never seen it before. And when I saw it and when he smashed it on Tyler Bay, I was like, oh my fucking god, it's one of the best finishes I've ever seen. And then I kind of thought to myself, well, it works on Tyler because Tyler's so small. I wonder what he's going to do with bigger people. And um, yes, it is. looked significantly less impressive over time. But you know, what I saw of them, I thought, wow, and they did do a takeover, they did their own takeover, and I, I watched that, and I'm not really sure how many they did. I can't imagine they did more than three or four, and remember there's a Kaylee Ray, Piper Niven, and Tony Storm triple threat, and I don't think that's on the first one, but I could be totally wrong. But, uh, yeah, I, I think... You know, there's that underlying idea that they just started it to mess with all the independents so they can make their own stars. Make that what you will, but I just think that for crossover appeal from people actually transitioning to the main roster, there's just not a lot of hope, unfortunately. Big Lariat from Walter. I just don't think they have high chances, which is, which is unfortunate for sure. Um, there's so many talented wrestlers on NXT UK, but I just, I can't see them making their way over there. I can win this with really, this powerbomb, this could be it. Big, massive Kawada bomb, folding powerbomb. One, two, no, not even two, Tyler Bate, next save. But yeah, I think for crossover appeal, I think it's very, 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 very limited. Um, and then, even if they make it to the main roster, is it worth it? I mean, Pete Dunne talks so much about how the British Indies wasn't dead and the uh, good thing and so on and so forth. And now he's Butch. He is a small little madman who looks like he's straight out of PG Blinders. While Walter is doing quite well for himself with Ludwig Kaiser. It looks like a big push is coming. He could be an Intercontinental Champion. I mean, he's a monster. He's huge. He's got the look. He's got the moves. Oh my god, look at the Tiger Man. He's real. I'm just destroying here as Walter. That is so much fun to play. He should have a great move set in 2K22. I haven't really dug into 2K22 that much. So I was just recording most of the time. Oh my god! The fucking fall away slam. Oh! Unnecessary. Unnecessary, my friend. No. For shame. For shame on you. Oh! Massive dropkick. Blocked by Tyler Bate. Locked me in. Go at it for a second. I gather my thoughts. Yeah, I, I don't see many people crossing over, and I think I don't know. The paycheck must be good, but it's not often. I, I really wonder what is, what is the appeal of it for people? Why would they go there? Why would they choose to be part of NXT? Apart from being, of course, being associated with the WWE and the possibility of crossing over. I can't think of anyone else who's crossed over. Oh, Tony Storm did, but Tony Storm, yeah, I suppose Tony Storm. Um, Kaylee Ray, she's been rebranded as Alba Fire now, and she's still in NXT after all this time. I just, I just don't know. But I do remember that Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate match very fondly. I do remember he kicked tons of ass. And Walter is champion. Well, Walter just in general is just so much fun to watch. Where he just destroys everything inside. Much like what I'm doing here, I actually feel unbeatable right now. I am slaughtering everything. Oh my god. Get out of my room. Get out of my room. Let's see, do I have a splash? If I have a splash, my day is made. I don't know if he'll do it though. He probably won't climb. Yeah, he needs a 
finish the climb. Damn. That was set up so perfectly, though. Let me get this little guy on. Come here. Come here. No, not gonna work. Big forearm. Stop wrestling around me. I am Walter. I do not wrestle around me. Let's see. I don't I don't will we even be able to hit this. Will we? Oh I will! We have something, ladies and gentlemen, we have something massive! Splash! But I didn't prepare for it. <laughs> Could have done better there. Cool, he had the splash. I remember when he hit that splash on Pete and he flattened it. He absolutely flattened it. Oh no! Blocked it. Headbutt. No, reversed. Oh! It's all elimination! Good way to go about it. Get out of it. Oh, double suplex. So many double teams going on. Guys, slow it down. Slow it down. It's a trainer. No. I will not allow that to happen. That is not the way it's going down, Tyler Bate. That is not going down. But yeah, I can't remember most of the, the takeover. So, I, mean, I think it's just such a non factor in WWE, unfortunately. But it, being part of this mod, I think is really cool. And the attention to detail is just fantastic from Tyler. So I'm really happy it's part of the mod. But I, I sure as hell can't see many people crossing over and getting on WWE TV. Oh, there's the chop. I forgot to use chop with Walter. So embarrassing. Get over there. Chop. Bang! Oh, choppy to the floor. Oh. oh, I knocked him out. I knocked him out with the chop. Oh my god, I killed him. I killed him with the chop. Big power bomb. Tyler, stop. Stop this. Is this really what the AI is like in Triple Threats? They just like come in and it's like I'm stealing your pin and there's nothing you can do about it. That's infuriating. Tyler, don't do this, my friend. Don't do this. Boom! I think I called it there. That's fucking a real slam. One, two, three. Walter. Still dominant. Still the highest. Of the high. Look at this slam. This is absolutely sickening here. Look at this. Just picks him up and just fucks him through the ground. Bam! Such a nasty, nasty move. High hopes for Walter on the main roster with Ludwig Kaiser. Sad Imperium is no more, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And check back in now for the final match that I'm going to do. I'm going to show some 205 Live, so check back for that. All right, back at it again with some 205 Live action. We're going to talk about 205 Live for a little bit here. A failed, another failed experiment from WWE, but I was just thinking to myself while I was doing this, um, how many of those tournament winners are still around? You know, you have the Mae Young Classic, you have the Dusty Tag Team Classic, and you have the Cruiserweight Classic. How many of those winners are actually still signed to the WWE? I mean, the Cruiserweight Classic is TJP, which obviously no longer there, but the Dusty Tag Team Classics, you know, the first winner was uh, Samoa Joe and Finn Balor. So Finn is still there, but a lot of talent not there any longer. And the Mae Young Classic, that was Kyrie Sane and Tony Storm. I think that was the two that were in it, if I'm not mistaken. So the track record of these tournaments is not well, but the track record of the division is not good either. Yeah, we have Swerve versus Leo Rush, this should be good, considering all the hack moves that both these guys have, this should be pretty good, but yeah, the Cruiserweight Classic, I remember watching the Cruiserweight Classic, of course, I was very excited to see the likes of uh, Kota Ibushi in there, Zack Sabre, Zack Sabre Jr., I was like, oh my hell, the Grand Metalik, looked amazing at the time, and then they started the Cruiserweight division, and they started this show, and I tuned out <laughs> so fast. I gotta be honest, I'm not even gonna pretend like I cared. Um, I thought the presentation was cool. I liked the purple ropes and the, the little cruiserweight symbol in the corners. But beyond the tournament, I think it was just... It never had a chance, really, did it? I mean, Neville, Neville did so much work with that 
championship. And then for Tony go to Enzo, you know, and Enzo was basically burying the roster. They had that one promo in the ring where he was burying the roster. I mean, it was just a total joke by the end. And I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to talk about it because, you know, people are going to compare it to the Cruiserweight Championship on SmackDown or they're going to cru- compare it to the Cruiserweight division in, in WCW. And I don't really know how successful all of them were. You know, um, obviously the Cruiserweight title on SmackDown it was treated as a joke. I mean, Jacqueline was winning it. The last champion was Hornswoggle. Like, it was a joke. It was a joke and the Cruiserweights regularly got destroyed any time they mixed it up with someone bigger. You know, whether it was Billy Gunn or Rikishi. You know, Jamie Noble, Funaki were going to get destroyed. Um, Rey Mysterio regularly got destroyed when he was teaming with heavyweights. And that's just the way it was. And same thing in WCW. Now, WCW's main events were so terrible and the rest of the car was so terrible that they stood out and they were fantastic. And I don't know if I can point to that many great cruiserweight matches on SmackDown during that era, but I don't know how ultimately successful it is. I think it's great wrestling to watch. It's very entertaining. Definitely when I talk about WCW and I talk about some of my favorite matches, the Cruiserweight division will probably be a lot of that list, you know, with the likes of Malenko, Mysterio, of course, the Halloween Havoc match, and Liger would come in, and things like that, and Fluvitude, and all that, all that good stuff. But ultimately, I don't know how successful it was or how big of a star anyone could be if they were in that division. Oh, Max gets to the back of the head here. Speaking of two guys who I thought deserved better and thought it would have done a lot better in the WWE, these two uh, definitely come to mind. And especially with the hit row, I thought Swerve was going to find something and they just got drafted to SmackDown and then they let B-Fab go. And <laughs> before you knew it, that was it. Oh, nice Hurricane Ron, nice Frankenstein there from Leo Rush. But yeah, before you knew it, it was over and Leo Rush... I think people are going to put the label of, you know, he had a big mouth on him and everything, but I just think he, sh- he believes strongly, he has his beliefs, and he, he has his beliefs that he stands up for them, that's, that's basically the, the gist of his story, and he is being a bitch right now, oh my god, he looks like he for a powerbomb out of the kick, and the scent on, I can't get him down from that, that level, he just will not drop from that level, okay, here we go. Now we build up some momentum cheaply as I continue talking to you here. Yeah, but I thought Leo Rush, I was sad to see him as a manager for Bobby Lashley, but I thought he was so good as well. I thought he he would he should have went further in WWE. I thought he would have went further in AEW as well because he is tremendously talented. I don't know what he's up to nowadays. I'm not really tuned in that much to what he's doing, if he's still taking bookings. But I thought he should have had the wrestling world almost at his feet because of how talented he was. And it's a shame. And it's a shame for Swerve as well. You know, he's in AEW with Keith Lee and he's doing fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think someone that talented, with that kind of charisma and that kind of cool factor should probably be doing something bigger than just tagging. Same thing with Keith Lee. I think both men deserve a lot better, but you know, AEW has such a, a bloated roster that it's hard to find time for everyone. I just hope that when the time comes, they get better. Yeah, 205 Live cancelled. Mm, there, there were one or two matches that I actually remember standing out, and I believe they were both Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali's um, match with Kenta, or with Hideo Itami, so I used the WWE names. And um, with Hideo Itami, that kind of street fight, I thought that was very good. Had a good story going in. And then, of course, the match that probably put. Um, Mustafa and Buddy Murphy on the map is that crazy match they had where they were doing Spanish flies onto the floor and using the announce table and everything. That's when everyone started looking at Buddy Murphy as this unreal prospect. It's hard to believe that he started out with this division. I suppose that's one of your success stories from this division then, yeah. Because I was saying it was all doom and gloom. He did get to have a sort of to be teaming with Seth Rollins as his number two. He had sort of a main event run in a way. He got to wrestle Roman Reigns and everything. That's bigger than most people from this division. He didn't get to do jack shit. I'm going to dive to the floor and it's going to end badly. Oh! Maybe some of that 205 live action. But yeah, those are the two matches that stick out in my head when I think of this brand. And that's about it. 
everyone else just kind of take <laughs> taking a toilet break of the poor the poor bastards all right i'm gonna show you another hacked move here hopefully i can just grab him to show you something really really cool i really like this move hack big elbow into the finish here we go lifts him up bam absolutely insane i remember the first time he hit it on uh, tyler breeze and the crowd didn't know what was coming in nxt and just boom just absolutely folding him up it looks fucking beautiful you can see here Graham from behind full nelson looks like it's gonna be a bubble bomb but i fold that motherfucker over and spike him on his head great stuff here from 205 live okay we're gonna go on to the women's match next women of nxt who deserve just as much coverage as the men because they were simply awesome so i'm not really sure who i'm gonna pick here i haven't really got an idea but i'm gonna talk about it so let's see um oh, philadelphia philadelphia sounds good to me got our tag teams bypass all them and here's the women all right i'm gonna go with bianca she's just such a star and i'm gonna go with io shirai See how we do on this one. Bianca Blair vs. Io Shirai at NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. See how we do. Banging wrestling theme, if you think about it. I, I actually really, really like Io Shirai's theme, and I really hope she makes it to the main roster. I think she's done everything there is to do in NXT. It's only a matter of time before she gets called up, or maybe she gets released, and I'm not really sure. Um, I think she deserves to be on the main roster. I think she deserves to have a shot. Whether she has the charisma of someone like Asuka now, who can connect and overcome the language barrier, I'm not sure, but she's super talented, she has amazing moonsault, and I would hate to see her wasted after all she's done. And of course, Bianca is in the middle of her second reign as world champion, as women's champion. She deserves it, she's an absolute powerhouse. She has so much charisma, and she's only gonna rise higher and higher in WWE. She's, she's extremely talented, and I can't wait to see what's coming up. The next pay-per-view match coming up. Oh, it's going to be a triple threat between Asuka and Becky Lynch at Hell in a Cell. I think it's going to be good. And um, of course, I think Bianca retains. And then I'm not really sure what the big plan is for her. Unless... No, I'm actually not sure. I suppose her versus Rhea Ripley has to be done somewhere down the line. You know, they have history in NXT. They have history in the Rumble. It just makes sense for the two of those to just fight it out. I'm sure, it'd be an excellent match as well. Yeah, she's just she's in her prime, I guess, and she's always one to stand out in NXT, and she just seems like she's a heart of gold. I wish her nothing the best. The big question, though, I guess, when it comes to NXT is, is the women's division their greatest contribution to modern WWE? You think of all the names that came from NXT, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bayley, all those women, Bianca, Rhea, Io Shirai, Oscar, Shayna Baszler, Dana, even to Dana Brooke, even to the Iconics, even to Nikki Cross, they all came into NXT. Most of them former champions. Is that the best thing that NXT has done? Showing that women's wrestling could be taken seriously in the WWE. I think it's definitely a good debate to make. It's a definitely a good argument to make. I think they've been incredible matches. I think a lot of them are future Hall of Famers. Definitely the Four Horsewomen are easy future Hall of Famers. And Bianca's in the middle of her run. She'll probably be a Hall of Famer soon enough. <laughs> if anything, if any sort of injury happens, I'm sure she'll be a Hall of Famer quicker than you'd imagine. Okay, we're actually speeding through this here. I actually feel quite bad for poor, 
before he will thrive. So we must go on. Here's another hacked move for you. The KOD, kiss the dead. Boom! Right at our face. Flip her over. And show you the 450 splash. And I'll do it for the women's division in this one. Oh, beautiful. That, my friends, is a good finish. Women of NXT showing exactly what they can do inside of that ring. So we'll go one more match. Um, there's one more move I want to show you. Also, hats off to Bianca Belair for making all her ring gear herself. That's, that's pretty iconic. She has some pretty iconic attires. And the fact that she does it herself, that's unreal. Oh. Okay, so I have one more match to show you and then we'll call it a day here on the NXT TakeOver Tyler Black mod. So one more match. We're going to go Adam Cole. Good old Adam Cole. Go for war games. War games. Right then. Adam Cole, leader of the Undisputed Era. We can pick that one and we'll go against Drew McIntyre. One more match, they say. One more match. Good old stuff. Adam Cole versus Drew McIntyre. Adam Cole against the man he took out in his debut. So yeah, I wanted to talk about this um, just simply because I'm really happy for Drew McIntyre. You know, he had his best run during the pandemic era without crowds, which is very, very sad to see. But with the UK show booked, Clash of, Clash of the Castle, is it? Whatever it's called, anyway. It looks like to be the biggest non-WrestleMania show of all time in terms of record attendance and it is tailor-made for Drew McIntyre to go there in front of his people and beat the shit out of Roman Reigns and I think it's a great story I think he deserves it and just to see his body transformation from his days when he was in WWE originally to the, the 3MB days to when he came back is just staggering the man got released he took it on the chin, he said, <laughs> he said, fuck you, I'm going to show you that you made a mistake. Uh, went to ICW, went to Impact, went to Evolve, went anywhere that would take him. Muscled up like a goddamn Hercules looking motherfucker. He came back, did the sidekick shtick with Dolph Ziggler and then just got the Claymore over, defeated Brock Lesnar and did the damn thing. It is such a shame. I, I probably would be pissed if I was a wrestler and you asked me would I want to be WWE Champion or if the catch was I was going to be champion during the pandemic era, I'd probably turn it down. I'd probably turn it down. How would <laughs> Yeah, it's the prestige of the championship, but you can't share it with anyone. There's no crowd. I, I wouldn't take it. And he must have been so frustrated for his moment in Tom without crowds. COVID, just another sign that COVID was the worst thing on the planet. But no, I think he's done tremendously well since coming back and he deserves to, to be champion again. It's a little harder now with the only one championship. Oh, there's a little bit of a, a bit of a glitch here. We haven't had too many glitches now, to be fair. So, glitch in last match. I think that happened in another video as well I was doing. There was like one glitch and it was in like the last match. So, fucking hell. So close. Perfection. But Drew continues to counter me here. Oh! I, doubt, I don't know if Adam Cole could do that, but he could. Pretty cool. Roll up with the tights, maybe, no, not enough. Speaking then of Adam Cole, he's gone on to, I don't know if I could say bigger things, but he's in, he's in AEW. As of this recording, he won the uh, Owen Hart tournament, he won the male version of that tournament. He's challenged Hangman for the championship before. We'll see where things go now, I suppose there might be a civil war between the undisputed what are they called now? The Undisputed Elite and uh, 
the Elite. That could be something that they do, maybe turn the Bucks babyface and bring back Kenny and see from injuries, but for now, I'm not really sure what to do with Cole. I'm not really sure what to do with a lot of the WWE roster, but Adam Cole, bottom line, did some great stuff in NXT. He's very enjoyable as champion. His multi-man matches with uh, the Undisputed Era were very enjoyable too, as we hit a top rope Frankenstein from Adam Cole, baby. And now he's in AEW. And so many of the talent, unfortunately, that were loved during this mod and during the peak of NXT are in AEW or no longer with the company. And it, it's crazy. It's crazy how much things can change in a year. We're not even a year into the NXT 2.0 stuff. And it's just night and day. Night and day between the two things. Now let me show you the last thing I want to show you here. The last thing. Here we go. I think this will be the best camera for art, or maybe not. Oh yeah, you get a nice perspective. Panama City Sunrise. Oh, spiked it. Poor old Drew. He's done for. It's over. Panama City Sunrise for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to check out another episode of Morning Mondays, the series where we look at No Mercy mods, Day of Reckoning mods, and SmackDown mods. This was, this was Tyler Black's NXT TakeOver mod. I hope it was something that was interesting for you. I hope you enjoyed the discussion about NXT. I want to hear from you in the comments. I want to hear from you. I just want to hear from you. I want to hear what you thought, what you think of the mod, what you thought of some of my thoughts here on NXT, and hopefully you check this one out. This was another episode of Modern Mondays. I'm Sean O'Connor, and I will see you next time.